Atono Hitika Lemilo, Nama Lakota, Chante Washte na Beiteris Papilo. That was a very condensed version of an introduction in my native Lakota language. I said, Hello, my relatives. I am Brave Bear. I am Lakota, and I greet you with a heartfelt handshake. The Shahilas, the Cheyenne, are our sister tribe. And as a traditionally raised Lakota, I didn't feel it would be appropriate to give a land acknowledgement here in Denver without their input. I reached out to Cheyenne tribal leadership to let them know what we were doing here today, and they responded by connecting me to one of their tribal members, Mr. Stephen Brady Jr., whose family was instrumental in getting the Sand Creek Massacre site turned into a national historic marker, which took about 20 years but was eventually signed into law in 1998. Stephen Brady Jr. is a descendant of Braided Hair, one of the fortunate who was able to escape the massacre at Sand Creek on horse, with his pregnant wife who was carrying Stephen's great-grandfather inside of her. I also reached out for further guidance from tribal historian Rick Williams, an academic that served as president and CEO of the American Indian College Fund, a national nonprofit organization that raises private support for all 32 tribal colleges and universities in the United States. I felt this is important to share to set the stage for my land acknowledgement. <clears throat> we want to acknowledge that the land I'm coming to you from is the Denver Front Range area, and to also acknowledge that for 11,000 years, more than 48 tribes frequented this area and was occupied mainly by six tribes, including mine, the Lakota, but has always been known to be Cheyenne and Arapaho country to all tribes. We want to acknowledge that this area was also recognized as Cheyenne and Arapaho land by the United States government in the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty, which clearly identified the boundaries which included much of Wyoming and Colorado, but was taken illegally after the discovery of gold in the Front Range. We also want to recognize the massacres that happened on this land. The Sand Creek Massacre is the most popular because of the inhumane brutality that occurred there at the peaceful chief's, chief's camp. These atrocities were recorded and publicized. There were over 20 chiefs present along with mostly women and children. Most of the chiefs were slain, permanently damaging the, stru the tribe's structure. <clears throat> As Lakota, we want to acknowledge the youth of the modern day Cheyenne, who every year returns to San the Sand Creek Massacre site to run the 180 miles back to Denver. This is done to honor the memory of all children and the unborn who were slaughtered in a horrific manner at Sand Creek, and also to honor the body parts of their ancestors that were taken back to Denver and worn as trophies by the soldiers and local militia in a victory parade through Denver, returning as heroes. The Cheyenne children run the exact same route that those body parts were carried. The Nona Cheyenne would like to also acknowledge the two officers, Captain Silas Sewell and Lieutenant Joseph Kramer, who disobeyed direct orders and refused to let their men fire on the Cheyenne and Arapaho. They are both revered by the Cheyenne Nation, and during their yearly memorial run back to the state capitol, the Northern Cheyenne stop at Silas Sewell's grave to pay respects, and many give credit to their existence to these two men. If it wasn't for Silas Sewell, I wouldn't be here. I honestly believe this, and we would have been wiped off the face of the earth if he and Kramer allowed, to th allowed their men to join in the killing. Northern Cheyenne tribal member, Stephen Brady Jr., Silas Sewell was later assassinated after his testimony in court on his experience at the Sand Creek Massacre. It was instantly recognized he was killed because of his testimony. David F. Hallis, Colorado historian. Lastly, we want to acknowledge that this land was stolen illegally and we want it back. Rick Williams.